Hey guys, I'm Jameson with Rogue Engineer, and today we're gonna show you how we took this old dock and turned it into this one. Let's get started. So there was a lot of work that went into even getting started on this project. We needed approvals from the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as approvals from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and we needed stamped, engineered stamp plans for the renovation, submitted those to our local um, code enforcement or permitting office, and we got the approval to get started. And then we could begin removing the boat lift and tearing out the old dock, pulling out any pilings that were damaged, which turns out we might as well just replace all of those. For the new pilings, we wanted to add a wrap to the bottom of them. So basically any part of that pile that is in the water gets wrapped with a coating that is going to prevent any barnacles and oysters and things like that from getting into those piles and kind of destroying the integrity of the pile itself. To get those piles in place, they started by using a water jet, which is essentially just a big water pump with a long steel pipe and nozzle on it to create a hole and set the pile in place and then hammer them down into the soil, um, which ended up being about a minimum of 10 feet into the bottom of the, the ocean or this canal. Um, they were able to hammer those all the way down until they got to what they call rejection, which is essentially the spot where the pile cannot be driven any further. Then they were able to start on framing the dock. Now, the process of framing a dock is similar to a deck. However, um, there's some different terminology. The What I've always called beams are actually referred to in the dock world as a bent, which is the large 2 by 12 um, that gets mounted to the pile and screwed in place from both sides. Now, one thing that we did that was a little unique in this build was anchoring the bends into the piles. Usually you would use a half inch diameter lag bolt, which means that you have to drill a hole all the way through the bent and, or both bents, one on each side and the pile itself. Now those piles are just essentially a tree and the center of that is the heart or known as the heart and it's really, really hard. So I spoke with Simpson Strong Tie and they suggested that we use the timber stainless steel structural timber screws which are a one-to-one -one replacement for a half inch diameter lag or a two-to-one replacement for a five-eighths inch through bolt and these things went in super fast and sucked that board right into the pile and it made for a very strong connection since this dock had a lot of different angles we actually ended up using the concrete bulkhead to connect a ledger board to, and we did so using Simpson's stainless steel Titan anchors, which really went well and made for a really good connection with that ledger board to that concrete bulkhead. With the ledger board and all the bents in place, then we could move on to the joists themselves. And those get installed first with just some nails, getting those all in place and exactly where we wanted them, and then coming back around with that rim board on the nose of the boat where we kind of created that little Y around the nose to make for easy access onto the boat. And then after getting all the joists in place, we could come back and install the hardware. Now the hardware that we needed to install on the dock was things like the hurricane ties as well as all of the brackets that we needed to carry those joists and anchor those to the ledger board as well as the rim joist and tie them down to the bends themselves. In the meantime, they took the boat lift and put that back on the new piles as well as installed that boat lift and added some new motors to that because we were having problems with the ones before. Now all the decking got installed with Simpson Strong Tie's quick drive screw gun, which was really handy. This thing is cordless and 
you don't have to squat down to screw those screws in and since it has the collated stainless steel decking screws that auto feed into the gun you can breeze right through those decking screws and get those boards installed in no time and for the decking we actually went with a wear deck which is the brand of decking and that is in the color barefoot sand i love how it turned out this is a really high-end decking for um, for docks especially that are susceptible to salt water and this is just what the contractor recommended that they use a lot and i love the product it turned out great and it's actually structural decking unlike most composite deck boards which i thought was a good addition to help stiffen everything up since we were kind of limited for space on the dock, we actually ended up deciding to extend the deck onto the land. And that just kind of created a bigger space for us to go out there and enjoy and hang out while the kids fish, or we're getting ready to board the boat and go on the water for the day. So they began by digging out a lot of that soil around that area after laying out where the deck was going to be. They dug all that out with a little mini excavator and then they were able to start setting the post in the ground. The post for this dock get installed about three feet deep and onto a footing, and then they were able to attach the bents or beams or whatever you want to call them to those posts that would then support the joist for the decking to be installed on. With all the framing done for the dock and the deck over the land, then they were able to finish up all of the decking, which really looked amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We could not be happier with how the dock has turned out. If you like our channel and you wanna subscribe, make sure you hit that button right there so you won't miss out on any future project videos. If you want the full write-up on this one, click on that link right there and that's gonna take you on over to the website. Until next time, be safe and happy building.